everybody, Norm over here at Norm's Rare Guitars with my old buddy, Mark Goldenberg. Mark is one of the great studio guitar players and great live guitar players. Been with Jackson Brown for how many years? I played with Jackson for 15 years. Fantastic. And Jackson is ultra tasty and he gets ultra tasty players, you know. So. He has great taste in musicians. Yes, he I'll does. He does. And, uh, you know, and now you're doing a lot of studio work and uh, some TV stuff, too. Yeah, I do, I do sessions at home. I have a studio at my house, so I do a lot of sessions that come in through the internet, believe it or not. You know, files come in, files go out. Been writing music for uh, a music library company here in Los Angeles. Uh, I just did a bunch of music for a show called Impractical Jokers. And uh, I'm wor uh, one of the companies that I've hooked up with. We're releasing an album for TV, TV movie only. It's library stuff, but it's uh, called Teenage Dance Party, and it's some 60 flav 60s flavored guitar instrumentals. Remember you guitar? Play, play a little bit of that. Kind oh, of it's stuff like he, oh gosh, I, uh, it's 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 kind of in the Ventures meets. Uh, <laughs> Kind of stuff, you know, a little cool. twangy, lots of reverb, no shortage of reverb. There you go. And we used um, a lot of 60s instruments like um, optagons. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. It's kind of like a, uh, it was made, I think, by Mattel. It has discs that you put in. It had like these preset rhythms. Probably Bob Bain played on the tracks for them. Yeah. So they're like discs and they're all wobbly. And we used Mellotrons and like as, as we went kind of as cheesy in a 1960s sort of way. You got like an electric sitar and that kind of stuff? No sitar, it? but we did, we did basically, uh, I played Telecaster and I played some Jazzmaster. I have a Jaguar that I've set up with flat wounds. Uh, which I'm going for that for you. authentic thing. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So we, uh, we used some kind of very vintage flavored guitars, mixed it up with some of these beats from the Optagon and there's this thing from the uh, 60s called a fun machine. I don't know if you remember the fun. Baldwin made it. Uh, I it was, remember Baldwin. It's like I a home organ, basically. Yeah. So it's uh, like we have uh, excavated uh, thoroughly that uh, that vein of music. So uh, that kind of stuff is uh, that's what I did for that one project, and of course now it's seeped into my everyday life. Very uh, cool. Well, you know, um, Elliot Easton from the Cars, he loves that kind of stuff too. He does exactly. like all that kind of ethereal kind of sort of, it could be movie background, it could be TV background, it could be whatever, but just to create a feel and a time, you know. You know, for guys that have kind of came up through hearing a lot of that music, you know, my parents would have a luau when I was like 12. That was all in there, you know, it goes in the, the brain and sadly it comes I remember out like when Dragnet I used to watch Dragnet whenever oh, there was a, yeah. whenever they were busting somebody for drugs there was the electric sitar right. would come yeah, on yeah, you know yeah. yeah so that would just create a mood of some kind you know and that kind of thing and uh, so do you see any of the old guys you know any of the people that you used to play with live uh, or well I see uh, the guys from Jackson's band we have a that particular band was from a certain era of Jackson uh, we get together once a year to have a dinner and we every year we go we have it at a different house, uh, and every year we do a different international cuisine. Nice. So uh, we just so I just saw those guys just a couple months ago. We had it at our house because we we just remodeled our house, so we we're now it's a party pad. Uh, cool. So uh, and the dinner was Korean, so we had. A, well, you're part Korean. Okay. Yeah, the, the, I'm mean, that that Korean Jewish access. There you go, the Goldenberg. Yeah, the Goldenberg. Play a little bit more, Mark. Okay, oh, come on, let's. The, the people want to hear you play. You want to hear, hear me quacking? Okay, can the d guitar play the blues?
that's like blues with some voicings and some chord changes and stuff like that. It's yeah, like kind of blues. Uh, well, you know, I studied with Ted for a long time. I was going to bring that up. Ted Green, who was, uh, you know, everybody's idol and teacher in L.A. and in a lot of ways, not just guitar, but he, he taught everybody a lot of stuff. You he know. was one of the, he was one of the real gentle people. You know? Yeah, he was Ted really was great. An incredible yeah. person. Loved everybody. Could find something good in everybody's playing, even mine, which was surprising enough. Uh, but uh, you know, but he he just always was a very positive guy, and he was just a positive influence on a lot of people, and one of the all-time greatest players. One of the, you know, his chord voicings were out of this world. He was a genius. Yeah. You know, I'm in, in a world where there's some really great players, Ted really is in the genius category. Yeah. Uh, he, speaking of kind things he would say, he would, I would go to lessons with him. And of course, you know, I was trying so hard to be like, you know, Mr. Reharm, you know, and put a yeah. new chord on every note of a melody. And Ted would always go, Mark. Remember, you're only a fret away from a good note at any time. <laughs> and also he said to me, uh, Mark, those are interesting chord voicings. But the best story, best Ted Green story I ever had was when I first went to study with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, with Ted, you'd have to, you'd kind of have to like call him a few times and he wouldn't have time for you. And eventually he would have time for you. And you, right. you'd, he'd get, you'd get a lesson in and so like, I didn't know what I was doing. I'd been playing piano a lot lately, and I was just getting back into playing guitar. And I wanted to, you know, I was, I was, I went to his house ready to impress, right? And so I see we talked, and I said, you know, I've been listening to a lot of Brazilian music and blah blah blah. And I was talking about, you know, like how I was really like into it. And he said, well, well play something for me. And I played my like best idea of what I thought like Brazilian jazz was. And he goes, wow, Mark, that's electric folk. Well, and then he probably played something that blew your mind he right played after. About, yeah, yeah, he blew, you know. The thing with Ted was, you know, he could, for example, I, I worked on an arrangement, sad, uh, not sadly forgotten, of like Somewhere Over the Rainbow, and I played it for him, and he went, he said, that's really good, and then he proceeded to play like 10 versions of the same tune back at me, completely off the top of his head, you know, jazzy versions, and he did like a version that Bach might have done, and then, yeah, you know, he was just like, he was just on his, another level of playing. What was kind of really cool about Ted, too, is that Ted knew so many chord inversions of this same chord, but in different areas of the neck, that when you watched him play, sometimes you thought he wasn't going to get there. He always did. But it was like, which one do I want to use? Exactly. And, uh, excuse me one sec. Okay. Michael, I'm going to put this on hold and get right back to you. All right. So anyhow, that was the phone. But so it would, you know, you'd watch Ted and he would like be going like, but when you're listening to it, it was perfect as always. He was, he was so amazing that he could talk to you. Like he'd be talking and playing. Playing some ridiculous. Most ridiculous yeah. stuff and you're going, and he'd be talking like, I, he'd be talk, I, he'd, I'd be at a lesson. He'd be talking about what I'd been doing and, and I'm listening and I'm going, okay, I'm getting this, I think, some of this. And then he's playing some other thing and I'm going, my brain, I gotta split my brain because I gotta like see, I gotta remember what he's doing there. You know, yeah. An amazing, amazing musician. Everybody should have a great one teacher like that in their life. One thing that I remember that he would do, he would play Theme from a Summer Place, which was a beautiful Percy Faith yeah. tune. You'd have to know the instrumental, but it had strings and it had just one of the most beautiful arrangements. But yeah. when Ted played it, he played like all the parts or all the necessary parts so that you felt like you were hearing the entire arrangement. It was like physically impossible for somebody to do it. Some of the chords he would stretch were just like crazy. And, crazy stuff. But it was just beautiful and it was always ultra musical. Yeah, that was the thing. Like he, he was, if he had played another instrument, it doesn't really matter that he played guitar. Like if, if he had done that, played the piano like that, he would have been a genius on the piano. It was just like, music. He just was great music. It wasn't guitar for him, it was just music. Right. And he was into doo-wop, and he was into Curtis Mayfield, and he was Absolutely. into, uh, he had a, a blues band called Bluesberry Jam that he huh? used to play around town, uh, you know, when he was younger. And then he taught everybody from Andy Summers to Jay Graydon to you to... Ry Cooter went in. Remember Ry, Ry did an album called Jazz? Uh-huh. And I know that 
that he went to see Ted for some of that jazzy 20s, 30s He, he stuff. was the go-to guy in L.A. that everybody, yeah, went, everybody to. went to. When they wanted to kind of expand their horizons, Ted was the guy. So anybody who knows him, loved Ted Green. I'm always glad to talk about Ted and just bring his memory back up because he passed a few years ago and he's greatly missed. And he yeah, was uh, nice. uh, an L.A. icon and uh, I think everybody misses him. So... There Mark, you thank you so much for My doing pleasure. this. My pleasure, anytime. It's always a pleasure to have you in here. I haven't thank seen you in a little while. Hooking me up. Sweet little guitar over there. ES330, one pickup version. And that's all you need. That's all you need. With, With a good ear and a good touch. Exactly. And you're there. Thank you.